so this is the nostalgia room here at the Be Quiet HQ in Hamburg. Uh, there are a bunch of old systems behind me. Some are new, but a lot of these are uh, comprised of older components. And the reason why is because once these power supplies are developed, uh, they have to be put through a bunch of tests. And obviously not everybody who owns a PC is using the most up-to-date hardware. So Be Quiet likes to make sure that their power supplies still function on older hardware, which is usually not as power efficient as their newer counterparts. Now the person in this beautiful room is Christian Rex. He is the technical director of power supplies here at Be Quiet. And he's about to give us a full tour of uh, all the stuff that's in here. So this system here, for example, this is a 12, 1300 watt consumption. This is 1300. 1300 watt power consumption, right here. Totally. Just from these, these yeah, two cars alone. This is, a, this is a that. R9295 295, X2. Yeah. So it has two, two GPUs, GPUs. It's four, four way crossfire and a big CPU. Yeah. Wow. You even got some older setups and stuff up here. Like yeah, that. this actually here you can see all my changing systems because sometimes also after sales have maybe some problems from end user mm -hmm. for compatibility. So I always keep the old systems and can directly change it to test the power supplies and figure out what kind of problem they have. Maybe. So the, for the power supplies to be able to deliver a lot of power in a sh very short amount of time, that's taxing on a, on a PSU? Like the, the demand for power being so quick now because of just the ability for these cars to fluctuate power demand so fast? Yeah, this is the, the main problem for the power supply. If you have a cheap power supply, you, it will easily shut down the system because you cannot reach the very fast uh, loading changes. Right. And our power supply from straight power up to dark power all have 99% uh, of their loading can provide by 12 volt only mm -hmm. because the VGA card and the CPU all, all use 12 volt. Right. So, and here, for example, we do some testing for the amperes go through the card and comes out from the card. So I use a current probe here to see how is the totally uh, distribution of the 12 volt current. It's very interesting that not the 12 volt goes in the VGA card also comes out from the ground because some current also goes through the PCI slot back and comes out from the 24 bit, for example. Wow. Yeah. So that's why we also need to figure out how it is and then we can set up our power supply. It's amazing how big is the current actually on the, each wire. You can see here already have 12 amperes going to the VGA card. Wow. And this is so times 12 volts, correct? Yes. So, so it's 240 watt already. Wow. Going from this cable in the VGA card. And you can see the back side, the ground is only less than 11 amperes. So it means 1.5 ampere goes somewhere, comes not back directly from here. Huh. So it's going to the motherboard somewhere? Yeah. Or here is more critical, this VGA card. Oh, yeah. 14 amperes in and only 9 point something ampere out. So all others go to mainboard and in the end you can see it comes here from this guys to the back to the power supply. Wow. We also we have a manual chroma you maybe know this kind yes, of system. This yeah. is we saw a bigger one downstairs. Yeah, yeah this is actually the same but only we call it manually one mm -hmm. so I can adjust the amperes by myself by programming here can load my power supply and can see also for the cross-loading problems maybe, what is the voltage regulation. Mm -hmm. And I can also put my power supply connect to here, mm -hmm. put the longer wire, put in my small chamber. And this I can heat up to 50 degree. Wow. So I also can test the very worst case for the power supply and see what will happen in the high temperature. Wow. So you literally take a power supply and you just plug all the connectors into here as you would a regular motherboard. And that's where the power is being delivered. Yeah. And that's where you can monitor it and control it in these boxes. Yes. Wow. But actually not only test by this way, because this is just a passive load can say so. It's just a, like a resistance. Right. So if you want to really understand the power supply, you need to really load it on the real system. Right. It's a right. totally different story. I can control something. I can make frequencies here, everything. But you never can make it like a real system. Mm -hmm. That's why they were testing them both. Like they would test them on the, on the chromas and then they would take them to real PCs. Uh, yes. And, and that's why I also have the systems here. Without okay. systems, you cannot really make sure the power supply is really working. Right, right. How much does like uh, just one of these chroma modules cost, you know? Uh, the cost for the whole set here, actually. The set is a power meter here, mm -hmm. this reloading units, and the AC source is around 20k euro. Wow. Around. $20,000 right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is from chroma, actually. I know like this more. So actually, that's why I create my own one, but it's not installed yet. <laughs> I built my own You made this board. yourself? <laughs> we did it with the supplier together. So actually, for me, this is more easier 
to plug it. Here always you need to use some adapters because you don't have enough connectors here. So this always have lost. So I, we create this one to can better connect. 24 pin, P8, also means CPU 1, CPU 2. Mm -hmm. And I have four connectors for VGA cards. And I also can put SATA and Molex here. And I can directly measure here also the ripple noise. I use golden connectors here, so I can directly detect by scope and measure the mm -hmm. ripple noise. We're looking at this was like some kind of mining rig or this something? Is, is, this is actually, I, I built a mining system, but in fact, not really for mining. We have an account for sure, but right. the, the <laughs> main point is I want to understand the 12 volt distribution to the system. Okay. Because we saw and we found out that many users do it in the wrong way. If they have, for example, eight VGA cards, and you have normally this kind of bridges here, mm -hmm. you need to support this by power, and they deliver a SATA adapter. Mm -hmm. So if I plug from power supply, the SATA here, is only one wire normally, 12 volt. And what the end users do, if they have the cable, have maybe four connectors, oh, they, connect they plug, 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 oh. make four pieces on one wire. So they're pulling a lot more they power burn, than they They burn should. the cables, yes. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I test here how is the best way to connect it. And then we make a small briefing. We also send to our sales and after sales guys so they can teach customers how to connect. Right. And I build a system up with 10 graphic cards. Gosh, and yeah, use I imagine. 2,200 watt. 2,200 watt. Supplies. And we are lucky we got the mainboard from the mainboard supplier, from the vendor that have 13 PCI slots. It's special made for mining. That's as right. What's funny is it's an H110 board. Like it's not even like a top tier. No need. And even to put an I, I3 only in. Yeah, and that's it's it. Totally yeah. enough. Totally that's why enough. they were concerned about like Pentium and I3 prices yeah. going up because you don't need a super powerful CPU. Actually, I, I read articles that many people use Celeron. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's but it. the important yeah. is uh, your uh, VGA cards. This I built also by myself some totally passive load without fan because the problem is if I turn on this, you cannot check noise from the power supply because right. the machine is too loud. So I use it this way, I can test my power without noise. So this one directly make 400 watt to the power supply, but without noise. So I can check very in detail if we have some noise inside from components or from the fan, because we develop the fan also by ourselves. That's 400 watt load, right? This is 400 watt. Wow. And I have another one in my other room is up to 800 watt. So 400 watt, you can't even hear it, basically. <laughs> you hear nothing and the fan is still only this is a fan voltage I always measure. Oh, okay. It's only 2.92 volt. So actually it's just in the beginning, it's nothing. Actually we have some buffer inside also from the component. So the fan even up to 50, 60% just rotate in the beginning. And what we do beside other uh, power supply vendors is we always let the fan spin even mm -hmm. in the beginning because you hear by yourself, you cannot hear them. Right, right. But the problem is if you use, for example, a semi-passive solution, many power supply uh, vendors do this, so they up to 40%, the fan will not spin, for example. Right, right. The problem is your component getting more hot in mm -hmm. this situation, and actually your lifetime will be much more shorter. Okay. So to prevent this, because we also give the five years warranty for the power supply, we let the fan always spin to have always some airflow, mm -hmm. even very small, but still have airflow right. to save the component. But really, if you think about it, like having it off versus having it on what its lowest setting, it's indistinguishable. So yeah. you'd rather get the airflow and there's nothing to lose, really. That makes, I know, because I've seen a lot of power supplies that do have that, like the auto shut off mode, mm -hmm. like it'll just stop turning the fan altogether. But this is, for the components, this is a risk actually. Right, right. And I also do the design uh, with our vendors together for the PCB. So for the component position, you can see, I always try to make big space inside and put the components to out and, and maybe in the center. So I have very good airflow. It mm -hmm. really go in and directly comes it out from here. So like, the fact that you have to be able to route all those connections on the PCB yes. itself. Yes. Is so we make all this, the, the daughter boards, all these connections and we found a layout to make it smoothly without wires. And at the same time, manage to keep those big components far enough apart to allow for optimal airflow. Yeah. Wow. It's always a big work to design the power supply. It's not only from electronical side, from the logic, from the, the topology, it's also how, where you put the components. And there are, there are also other rules. You cannot move maybe the main transformer too far away from the SR, otherwise you have too many lost, and blah, blah, blah. so mm -hmm. you need to take care of everything. Actually, the topology is from our supplier. Okay, okay. Yeah? But I work together with them to move the things to what I understand from my experience what is the best airflow, what is the best heat consumption. This power supply comes also from FSP. FSP, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. You've worked with several of them, do you have an idea which we, one? We, ha we work with uh, some different mm -hmm. uh, suppliers, but sure, FSP is still our main uh, supplier. Okay.
Is that the same for the dark power? Yes. Okay, FSP. Yeah. Because they have the best solution for the high quality, high wattage, high level power supply right. yeah, solutions. Right. Yeah. I have my small museum here with all the old <laughs> power supplies. Just like cabinet full of PSUs. Yeah, but this is, uh, I can show you another room. This is his stash right here. <laughs> <laughs> you literally have an entire floor dedicated to just power supplies stacked on top of each other. <laughs> yeah. Because I always need to, to test if end user have some question. I need from every series, every model in my hand. Wow. I cannot always go to warehouse, put another one out. Right, right. So I need to stuck here. Now, the, all the new power supplies, Chris was saying, uh, those all use the same modular configuration. So you can. This is what I what I have now. Actually, right. our dark power, our straight new straight power show up, power zone, and even pure power. The cable are compatible. That's great. To each other. That's awesome. My viewers know why I keep asking that question. He showed us a stash over there. <laughs> yeah, and from, from my job seeing, so I control the developing, I control the quality management, and the project management. This is a beautiful room. Even for me, I like to sit here, especially on this desk there, if I can solder something, do my handwork, so we have the fresh air, yeah, the good say, viewing. The <laughs> so how long have you been in this position with Be Quiet? I work in less than over 12 years. 12 years. And in this position for Be Quiet, also over 10 years already. 10 years, really. Wow. I do the developing for Be Quiet Power Supplies. What is the noise? It's coming from Some, one of those. Someone one want to argue over? with me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's coming from one uh, of those. Maybe one of these guys' battery or empty or something. So uh, these are reading power just from being wrapped around the cable? Actually, you no need to, 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 to make some connection. It's used by magnet coil. Oh, the okay. Magnet, they measure the magnet field, actually. Wow. It's a very good technology. That's, yeah, that's really cool. I was about to say, like, how, because you're not actually connecting <laughs> anything physically to these cables. You're In just the past, I did around. like this. So I built my adapters with a voltage and ampere meter. I need to put the wire here, connect to a VGA card, connect to here, right. and measure, oh, okay, three ampere. Perfect. Ah, too complicated. So this is much easier. This is really nice. So this allows you to isolate power consumption to each cable. Even I can just only use one wire or two wire, whatever I want, Easy, easily to change. Are these like available, like commercially available? Yeah, yeah I've actually I bought this in, I don't know, do you know the store Conrad? It's a, oh, it's a very big store in Germany for electronic things. Okay. And the brand is Voltcraft. So it's not so expensive actually. And no need, 0 0.01 exactly, no need actually right, right, has. Yeah. No need to perfect. If I want to have perfect results, I use my chroma right, and scope, right. then I have perfectly results. But for this to see the distribution of the power, totally enough. This is really cool. I'm going to have to go out and buy one. This could be really good for troubleshooting in general. It's not, actually, it's 35 euro one piece. Not that's affordable. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good price. I just have the, you know, I have the typical, like, uh, what, fluke voltmeters and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, like, I just say so you have to probe them, so you can't you And can't then you have overcurrent, and the fuse from the from the tool broken, and yeah, you exactly. replace the tube. <laughs> yeah. Ah, my goodness. Yeah. They're really long wires. And this wires actually and... can measure up to 100 amperes. Oh gosh, so, yeah, so anything PC related, yeah. you're gonna be fine. No problem. Yeah. Check this out, a quad SLI setup of GTX 260s. How many of these are you gonna see in a lifetime? So he's got motherboard sorted by socket type. So 1150, 1151, FM2, AM3+, plus, LGA 2011, FM2, 939, FM1, AM3, 1155, 1156. Now you can't really see those, but uh, we're getting really old here. Look at that. LGA 775, 423, 478, All right, we found a gap in the rain to finally film the uh, outro for this video. It's been this raining is, all day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the typical uh, Hamburg summer, you know, it's like, you know, 16 Celsius and like showers going down all the time and it's just crazy. You know, it's just, uh, so this is just one part like of the, the whole, right? Yeah, behind us you can see actually like, yeah, the like half of the main building. Yeah. And <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we down there. just finished our tour and um, yeah. 
Well, it's pretty interesting, I guess. It was. Yeah. Oh, I love it. We appreciate you guys opening up your doors for us and yeah, showing no us behind the scenes stuff. It was really cool to see how it all is distributed, how it's all tested, troubleshooted. Yeah. It's cool that all that's on site. And like, we saw even the fact that you guys had like just kind of makeshift PCs to train people who don't even have to work with PCs hands-on just so that they are familiar with the just, components. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, that's yeah. really nice. So they know you exactly at least the basics, you know, yeah. when you like, yeah. you know, want to sell it, you know, you need to know a little bit about it, you know, that's so. That's good, that's yeah. good. It's all, that's really nice to see. Yeah. So we've had a lot to, to cover today in this tour. Uh, I think there's gonna be two videos, if not more, uh, just because there is so much to see, so much to test and find out. But uh, Chris, really appreciate you. Help sure, us man. out. It was really nice of you to do this for us. So, sure. No worries. Us, so no worries. We're yeah. going to be back in Germany very soon. So, all right. This Thank is you. Science Studio. Thanks for touring with us.